Hello and welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Sharon from Ventura County Library and today we're going to have stories about... Oh wait, let's have you guess. Listen for a moment. Go! Go! Quack, quack! Do you know who makes those sounds? All those different kinds of sounds? You guessed it. We are going to talk about birds today. So let's get started. First, we're going to kind of get warmed up with our welcome song. So shake it out, 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 shake it out. Okay. Can you show me your hands, please? Very good. Okay, we're going to do our welcome song together. Here we go. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now it's time to have some fun. Read some stories, sing some songs. Some are short and some are long. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now it's time to have some fun. Very good. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And since we are talking about birds today, I thought we would do a rhyme that we all know very, very well. We have two birds. What color are those two birds? They're light blue. That's right. They're blue. And then they're sitting on a hill. So we're going to do two little blue birds. Here we go. Two little bluebirds sitting on a hill. One named Jack. Hi, Jack. One named Jill. Hi, Jill. Fly away, Jack. Whoop. Fly away, Jill. Whoop. Come back, Jack. Whoop. Come back, Jill. Whoop. Oh, and they're getting kisses. Look at that. Okay. Well, I would like us to do that, but with our hands. So can you show me your hands, please? Get them ready, get them ready, get them ready. And so we're going to have our fists be our hill and our thumbs be our birds. Okay? Here we go. Two little blue birds sitting on a hill. One named Jack. Hi, Jack. One named Jill. Hi, Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Whoop. Come back, Jack. Whoop. Come back, Jill. Whoop. Okay, give us give yourselves a thumbs up. Very nice. Okay, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And I think we are ready for our first story. It is called How to Find a Bird. And oh look at these beautiful end papers. Look at that. Beautiful bird houses and bird nests. And so, How to Find a Bird is written by Jennifer Ward, illustrated by Diana Sadaika. And we want to say thank you to Simon & Schuster Books, the Beach Lane Books imprint, for permission to read today's story, How to Find a Bird. There are lots of ways to find a bird. That's the wonderful thing about birds. To find a bird, first you want to blend in and move slowly. Take a look. See how they're in the grasses there? And they're moving very slowly. Because look, there's a great blue heron right here and an American veterans, they're hiding, look at, in the grasses. So sometimes you have to go where they are and blend in and move slowly. Quiet is good too. So quiet that you can hear a heartbeat. Why do we want to be quiet here? What is happening with the tundra swan and her 
baby. Yes, that's right, they're sleeping. We don't want to scare them. That's why we're being quiet. So quiet, you can hear your heartbeat. And don't just look up to find a bird. Sometimes you have to look down to find a bird. Look down, low to the ground, where some birds forage, seeking things, hiding in the earth. Do you see? Sometimes they are looking for ants to eat, or what's this? That's a worm! Somebody's getting a good lunch. We're going to look down. Look down where some birds seek snacks. <gasps> look at the snacks they're finding, the fishies. Look down where some birds splash. Oh, this is by the ocean, and they're catching fishies and shellfish, looks like clams. This is a gull and a spoonbill and an anchinga. They all find things by looking down. If you take a walk, watch your step. Some birds, they nest on the ground. And you do not want to step on their eggs. And some burrow in the ground. This is a burrowing owl. And they dig holes for their babies to grow up. And their nest is on the ground. So, don't just look up to find a bird. He's looking up. He is finding a bird, but sometimes you can find a bird by looking straight ahead. You will have to have a sharp eye. That means you need to really look and you need to pay attention. Sharp as an eagle's eye. And if you look really carefully, you will see. If you look sharply and carefully, you will find all kinds of birds right in front of you at eye level. Birds are the cleverest blenders of all. Look at the whippoorwill and the brown creeper and the long-eared owl. At first you may not see them, but if you wait, if you are still, that means not moving, you'll see and if you're quiet, you'll see you are just as clever as a bird. Of course, you can always look up to find a bird too. You can look up high in the sky where birds fly. Look, we have some Canadian geese and a rufous hummingbird and a western tanager and a purple martin and a monk parakeet an American kestrel, a Baltimore Oriole. Look at all these many, many birds. Sometimes when you look up, you will find birds simply sitting, like red-tailed hawks and European starlings. What are these? Have you ever looked up and seen what these are? Yes, they're the electrical wires. That's why wires are we're careful with our wires that we coat them because we don't want any birdies to get hurt when they land on them. If you could perch high in the sky, look at it, it's a uh, tree high in the sky. They're pretending they're way up high in the top of the trees. What might you see? <gasps> look at all the birds flying in a flock, a mermation of starlings. Have you ever seen that many birds at one time? Huge flocks of birds fly in the air together. If you want to find a bird, don't be tricked. Some birds are stealthy. They're here one minute and gone the next. Look at it. There's the, pe the peregrine falcon and, whoop, wait a minute, where did it go? Is that even a bird? Some birds will announce their presence when they are near. Here's some right here. Chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee, go, 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 go. 
or announce your presence when they see you. J J J J J J. <laughs> Sometimes they use it to, to tell their birds when you are coming. And if you feed them, they will come. Look at what they're doing. There's the downy woodpecker. There's the ruby-throated hummingbird. Then all you need is a window to find a bird. <laughs> when you have things that birds eat outside your window, then they will come and you can watch them. Some birds can't be found at all unless you read about them. Some birds used to live on the planet and they don't live on the planet anymore. These birds are extinct, which means they no longer exist. That's sad. The dodo, the Carolina parakeet, the seaside sparrow, a version of the ivory-billed woodpecker, the passenger pigeon. It's hard when you don't keep things safe, huh? But the best way to find a bird, if you want to find one, is to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Why is that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that bird? <gasps> so sometimes we can just sit outside and close our eyes and we can listen. And oh, these are some of the things we might hear. Tweet, tweet, turly, turly, turly. Yeti, yeti, yeti. Who come for you? Who come for you? Honk, honk. Check, 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 check. Old Sam! Peabody, Peabody, Peabody! Witchy, 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 witchy! Chur, chur, chur! <laughs> All those are bird noises! Can you believe it? Birds can be noisy, can't they? But that's the wonderful thing about birds. Look at how big this bird is. The whooping thing. That's the wonderful thing about birds. Now, there's some special information at the back of this book. I'm not going to read it all, but I want to tell you about one thing. It says, we can all be bird watchers. Bird watching is as simple as opening our eyes and our ears to the sights and sounds around us. So, everyone can be a bird watcher or a bird listener. You just have to go out, walk around, listen, be very quiet, walk slowly or be very still. And you can see amazing birds wherever you live. And that is how to find a bird. There are so many beautiful pictures. I would suggest if you could borrow this from the library so that you can read it in detail. Okay, so I have another bird here. What kind of bird is this, do you think? Did you say duck? <laughs> yes, so I have a little duck rhyme today. It goes like this. When a yellow duck walks down the street, quack goes his bill, quack waddle goes his feet. He comes to a puddle and with a bound he in jumps yellow duck swimming all around. <laughs> so he quacks and he waddles and he jumps and he swims for things, for action that duck does. So, okay, you want to get yourselves ready. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Okay, get yourselves ready to be a duck. Are you ready to be a duck? Okay. When a yellow duck, you have your wings, when a yellow duck, Walks down the street. Quack goes his bill. Quack, quack. And waddle goes his feet. That's right. He comes to a puddle. And with a bound in jumps yellow duck. Swimming all around. Did you do it? Did you do it? Did you quack and waddle and jump and swim? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Okay, I wiggle my fingers. I wiggle my toes. I wiggle my shoulders. 
I wiggle my nose. And now all my wiggles are all out of me. And I can sit for our next story. And this one is called Wing. There's some new baby birds in the nest. And we're going to see, we're going to see how he learns how to fly. This little bird, he doesn't give up. Nope, not at all. So, Wings is written by Cheryl B. Klein and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. And we want to say thank you to Simon & Schuster Books. As their Anthenium Books for Young People imprint. And they gave us permission to read this story. Wings. Wings! Look at the birdies in their nest. I think they're grown up enough. They're going to try. They're trying out their wings. High up. Is this nest is high up in a tree. <gasps> He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's kind of clinging. Look at his feet. Clinging, holding on to the nest. He's not quite ready. And then three, two, one. Flings! He flings himself off. That's how you have to practice when you're a bird. Fling! And he's flapping, and he's flapping, and he's flapping, and he's flapping, and uh-oh, he has a little bit of a tumble. Boom! Oh, a little bit of a splash. He tried his very best, and he did pretty good, but he still kind of ended up on the ground. He bumped, he bumped his wing a little bit. Oh, it stings. Have you ever had that happen if you've fallen down? Kind of hurts a little bit, it stings, and then it goes away, and then you try again, right? Oh, but first he landed in a puddle, <laughs> and he has to get himself dry. So can you pretend to be a baby bird, and he's going to rings, he rings himself out. That means he flutters his wings so that all the water flaps off. Ring. Oh, stings. That means he kind of hurt his wing a little bit. He's got to move it around a little bit so it feels better. Oh, poor bird. There he is. He's kind of feeling. Let's see. Let's see what he's feeling. Is, is that bird face a happy face or a sad face? What do you think? Yeah, sad yeah, could even be a little, like, frustrated because he wanted to fly right away, and sometimes things take practice. Yep, sad and frustrated. Oh, but he got distracted. He saw some things on the ground. He looked down. What did he see? That's right, a snail right there. But his eyes, let's take a look at his eyes. His eyes and his pupils in his eyes are... Look in this direction. What does he see that direction? <gasps> what are those pink wiggly things? What do you think they are? Yeah, they're worms. That's a good distraction. Food. And he's thinking about, see here's the thought bubbles. He's thinking about brothers and sisters. Brings? <gasps> I think they're Tweet, tweeting, we want some, we want some. Brings, he's going to bring, do you think? What does he have to do? <gasps> okay, he's going to launch himself. Three, two, one, springs! Jumps up in the air, and he flaps his wings. Flap him, flap your wings. Help him. Flap, 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 flap. And he sings. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, 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 sings. And then he's flying. Look at that. Do you know what these are when you fly like this? 
These are rings. Okay, help me. Take your finger. Here we go. We're going to go whoop. That's one ring. Whoop. That's two wings. rings. Whoop. That's three rings. He's flying. Zing. And now they're all flying with their parents. And then they go flying away to have an adventure. And that is wings. Okay. Well, it's time for rainbow fun. Here it is. Do you remember how to do this one? So first take a deep breath. I'll blow it out. And take another deep breath. And blow it out. And can you hum with me? Mm -hmm. Here we go. I know the colors of rainbow fun. Green like a frog and yellow like the sun. Orange like a pumpkin, white like the snow. A ruby red apple and a jet black crow. Purple like a flower, brown like a bear. A little pink pig and a blue shirt to wear. And today, since we're talking about birds, which of these shapes is a bird? What color is the shape that's a bird? That's right, it's the black crow. We heard about that in the first story. Caw, caw, caw. And so today we're going to put the blue shirt on the black crow. Very good. Well, it's time to say goodbye. So get yourselves ready, get yourselves ready. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. Till next time, keep reading. Bye.